first of all, um, we already heard some, a lot of insights in why we need a paradigm shift and uh, how this can look like. So as I am part of the chair of uh, infrastructure politics, of course, we also discuss future mobility scenarios with our colleagues who do um, the modeling exercises. And one measure we are always agree on is that, of course, we need uh, sufficiency but uh, sometimes sufficiency is more a buzzword and uh, we now have to make it more clear what this is and how to quantify um, this. Um, just, I want, to, uh, I want to wrap it up. Um, in the uh, sustainable development, we have three, let me say, guiding strategies. One is efficiency. It's the typical engineering approach that you get the most output with the least input. Um, yeah, so typically on the powertrain of a car, um, you make some techno uh, fixes in the gear or the motor, or you shift the powertrain from an uh, internal combustion engine to a whole electrical vehicle. Then we have the consistency which I would translate in the mobility sector more to our individual behavior, what uh, kind of transport mode we cho choose, which has of course an impact on our um, emissions or the time we need to travel or what we uh, have to um, spend money for it. And the last thing I want to uh, make a focus is the sufficiency. That's easily said just a reduction of a demand but uh, for us it's important to talk and to discuss and maybe to, to, to find out what kind of demand, what level do we want to lower. Is it the resources we are, need, we are needing for uh, providing mobility, is it technologies, the cars or the bicycles or is it the uh, traffic volume? So. Um, I was thinking about the uh, traffic volume with uh, we need more mobility with less traffic. We heard a lot of um, that today that our uh, mobility concept right now needs the most of the space with a uh, private car and have the worst emission balance. So we have a lot of traffic and uh, not that much mobility. And uh, so another concept is the multi-model mix. Um, we heard about this, if we, uh, our mobility is based on car uh, and pool sharing, walking and cycling, to have an increase in mobility and, and decrease in traffic. And this is uh, one concept of sufficiency for traffic. I don't go deeper in this because we heard it from two speakers um, today. So the sufficiency, um, I uh, asked the question, who is afraid of sufficiency and why uh, don't we, why is it so hard to implement sufficiency concepts? And I think this is the narratives we, which can come up into our mind, minds if we talk about sufficiency. Uh, on the left side, uh, it's one uh, imagination if we, think about sufficiency in mobility, that we go back to older ages with a cow and a little wagon, something um, my, um, the, my, uh, the speaker before me uh, talked about. Or um, now is, uh, we need, uh, there are new narratives and stories of car-free cities um, where you have a lot of new space for maybe urban gardening, what you see on the right side, or bike lanes. So um, I think the, this is a game changer. What narrative um, uh, will make it in the uh, greater society? And on the other hand, who's afraid of sufficiency? I think it's, of course, the industry, the car, uh, the automobile industry. They are providing more the narrative now green growth instead of uh, sufficiency um, that means they say that uh, less traffic will lead to less cars of course which uh, will lead to a declining economy and uh, as we learned in neoclassics this means uh, less wealth we uh, think it's the other way around we need sufficiency instead of green growth and 
because of that, of course, we have to discuss and uh, implement degrowth strategy strategies and uh, circular economy. So I think we shouldn't be afraid of sufficiency, but for this, we need new narratives and where we are telling stories of the benefits we can get, maybe health, environmental or economic benefits and our um, planning and behavior then must uh, be based on these narratives. Uh, just to um, go on with the discussion and to uh, maybe give some inspiration uh, for topics students can work on. Um, it's of course how to model um, sufficient mobility scenarios. If I get asked this question, I would simply say we just have to half the amount of cars and double the public transport, the cycling and walking and the traffic which uh, remains uh, we have to uh, satisfy with shared er uh, electric vehicles. But is it really that easy and how can we uh, model these scenarios? I think it's very important that our infrastructure planning must be based on 100% renewable scenarios because the infrastructure uh, always um, pa uh, always paves the way or um, decides, uh, shapes the future, yeah, shapes, shapes the future uh, system. And we also heard about power and uh, in uh, fuels and to come back to the industry who is afraid of sufficiency, what I think, um, especially in Germany, because we have to acknowledge that in Germany, uh, we have a culture of cars and a culture and our uh, economy is based on the on the, um, in this, the car industry and uh, they now have these what I call false solutions with synthetic fuels instead of sufficiency of course it might be simple to just change the fuel and don't change the vehicle or the system but this would just lead that we shift our problems what we have here uh, in Europe or in uh, Germany environmental and health issues to another region because we saw that uh, the hydrogen we need is a very inefficient process and I also think that uh, it will not be hydrogen from renewable energies. Um, we also talk about uh, hydrogen from uh, fossil fuels. So this is a strategy also to uh, stick or stuck, get locked in in the fossil fuel systems. These uh, Hydrogen, um, if you look at the strategies uh, from our hydrogen strategy from um, the Bundesregierung or um, what we have on the European level, there are massive imports from third countries, uh, which will lead to new social health and environmental issues in these countries. Uh, what we have to think about if we talk about synthetic fuels in the uh, transport or in the mobility sector, so in the end, this is not efficient, it's not socially responsible. I think we also should talk about uh, neocolonialism in this, um, in this uh, case. And it's not, in the end, it's not climate neutral and not uneconomic. So this is a big field where um, we have to discuss further. And yes, there is a workshop on 4th of December in the course of the SIGMI conference where we um, want to further discuss these questions, um, what about the acceptance and feasibility? We heard a lot about interdisciplinarity. I would say we need transdisciplinarity approaches, not just from experts and from the scientists. We have to uh, go out and talk to people, let them participate in this process to a 100% renewable um, mobility system. And yeah, and the big questions remains, what are the input data? What is the quantity of sufficiency? Where do we want to have sufficiency? And yeah, you're all welcome to the workshop on 4th of December. And now I'm looking forward to the ongoing discussion. Thank you.